Good afternoon. It is uh, three o'clock. Welcome, everybody. This is the first installment of Gaming in Germany's new webinar series. From now on, we intend to have a new episode on a relevant topic every one or two months. Gaming in Germany is a business community that seeks to facilitate the sharing of knowledge and networking against all shareholders. In addition to our webinars in print magazine that will be published soon, we also aim to organize a conference this fall, if circumstances permit, of course. Today's webinar will last 45 minutes and it will consist of three parts. First, we have a brief introduction on the current and future gambling advertising regulatory frameworks by a leading legal expert. Second, our three panelists will each address and answer two relevant topics. Third, during the last 15 minutes of the webinar, we will open up the discussion and invite our listeners to submit their own questions to our panelists. In order to submit your questions and to vote in our poll, please make use of the Slido app. It's anonymous and it's free. You can download it from the App Store or scan the QR code that you see on the screen and click the link. The events tag is GIG. GIG. Next slide, please. Gaming Germany and the business community we represent is being made possible by the generous support of our partners and sponsors. Thank you. We could not do this without you. Next slide, please. To fully participate in this webinar, as I mentioned a minute ago, and just to mention that to the people who have just uh, dialed in, you can vote in our poll and to submit questions to our panelists. It is necessary to make use of the Slido app. You can download it from the App Store or scan the QR code and click the link. It's anonymous and it's free. If you make use of the app, the event code for this webinar is GIG. Next slide, please. And on that topic of Slido, if you're logged into Slido, this is what you will see. There are two tabs. One to vote in our poll, the other to submit and upvote questions. You can switch between the tabs by clicking or tapping at the top of your screen. Next slide, please. Before kicking off, I would like to thank the sponsor of today's webinar, Gamansa. Gamansa is a leading software developer and provider of solutions to the iGaming industry. With us today, we have Robert Seville from uh, Malta, Director of Business Development at Gamansa. I will give the floor to Robert for a minute. Let's hear from him what Gamansa is all about. Robert, welcome. Thank you very much, Willem, and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, very briefly then, Gamanza is a platform provider. We're backed by Grand Casino Baden of Switzerland, uh, where they finally had new regulation come into force last year that allowed initially the land-based casinos to launch online projects. So they made an investment into Gamanza and we developed a brand new platform and we're in fact the first uh, of the casinos to go live under those new regulations. In the next couple of months, uh, we'll also launch the online brands of two more of the casinos in Switzerland. So we've grown up very quickly uh, in this newly regulated, highly regulated market. Uh, it does provide us with a lot of really valuable experience that we would now like to transfer to Germany, where regulations will present similar challenges. And if we look at the next slide, uh, some key strengths include a flexible compliance framework that can be easily adapted for the specific KYC, AML and responsible gaming requirements. Um, and we're also, of course, uh, backed by a German speaking casino group. So we're very well positioned to help our counterparts in Germany make the most of the online opportunity. Um, and Gamanza also produces casino content in-house and that includes bespoke game development for the casinos that use our platform. Um, and also within our wider suite of iGaming products is our customizable gamification software and real-time CRM, which in the context of today's webinar uh, can both help maximize marketing budget and drive better player engagement and retention. Uh, so that's my introduction complete. Thank you for listening uh, from us at Gamanza. Best wishes for good health and enjoy today's webinar. Great. Thank you very much, uh, Robert. That was, that was very interesting. Let's move on to uh, the next slide, to today's poll. I would like to encourage all our listeners to participate 
and vote. In this poll, you can select up to two answers. In order to participate, as I said before, and for the people who just dialed in, welcome, scan the QR code and click the link, or download the Slido app and enter the event tag GIG. Um, so will the gambling advertisement regulatory framework that come into force on July 1st become a success? Yes, yes, or no, no. You have two options to choose from here. We see people voting at this moment. I give it another uh, 10, 50 seconds. So please go to slider.com, enter the tag GIG, like gaming in Germany. See people voting at the moment. While we go to the next portion of uh, the webinar, you can keep it voting on this poll. Uh, again, the question is uh, on top. There's two yes and there's two no answers. The new rules offer the industry enough opportunities to advertise its products and services, yes. That's the first yes or no. There are insufficient opportunities for licensed operators to distinguish themselves from black market operators. Also a topic that uh, surely will come up uh, later. We slowly see some results. In the poll, I give it another few seconds. Um, again, point your camera of the phone to the QR code on the left side of your screen and you get straight to the Slido app. You can also use the Slido app later to upvote questions. Again, you don't have to submit questions on your own. You can upvote other people's questions all in the Slido app. Anyway, let's move on. We'll get back to the poll results after having heard from the panelists, just before we open the discussion to the audience questions. Next slide, please. Which we have here today, uh, Jörg Hoffman. Af apart from being the head of the gaming and betting group at Melchers Law, Jörg is also the past president of the International Masters of Gaming Law, the IMGL. Welcome, Jörg. We have Dr. Blau. As General Counsel of Sport One Media and AG, Mr. Blau is responsible for the legal, regulatory, and policy issues affecting the television stations and digital media platforms of the Sport One brand. Furthermore, Dr. Blau, as CEO of Magic Sports Media, he is also responsible for the marketing of gambling advertisements on the media platforms of Sport One and other brands. Welcome, Dr. Blau. Frank Hesse, our third speaker today, as founder and managing director of his Munich-based consulting agency, Sport Campo, Frank Hesse has held various senior management roles in the gaming industry since 2004. His main background is marketing. For the last three years, he has been supporting the Kindred Group in its successful market entry in the German market. Welcome, welcome, Frank. And last but not least, Martin, Martin Heijer. Martin is the Secretary General of the EGBA, the European Gaming and Betting Association, representing the leading online gambling operator licensed and regulated in the EU. Before joining the EGBA, Martin worked as the Internal Market and Consumer Protection Counselor at, at the Netherlands Permanent Representation at the EU. Next slide, please. And let's move to our first speaker, Jörg. Welcome, welcome to the webinar. Welcome from Heidelberg. I'm, I'm assuming you're sitting from uh, Heidelberg. I hope you're well. That's correct. I'm very well, William. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Well, Jörg, please share with us your insights on the legal and regulatory framework that governs gambling advertisement in Germany. Happy to do so. Thanks, William. Hello and welcome, everybody. Let's just imagine for a second that there would be no advertising at all. Not on TV, not on the radio, not in the newspapers and magazines, no brochures, nothing on the internet, social media, simply nothing. Nobody tells you what's out there, whether it's good for you or bad, where you can find it, how much it costs, or that you better ask the doctor or pharmacist first. If there were no advertising, what would we miss? What is lost? I'll tell you at least three things. Information, education, and guidance. Let's get back to the real world. There is advertising and there's also 
advertising for gambling. And this one is regulated, sometimes more, sometimes less. Our specific topic today is responsible advertising in regulated markets. Let's see what's going on in Germany. The German gambling market will be regulated as of 1st July 2021. Then the Interstate Treaty 2021, which has been notified to the EU Commission on May 18th, 2020, so two days ago, is supposed to come into force. What will the future bring with respect to advertising for games of chance? First of all, it's important to know that as of July 1st, 2021, regulation and licensing regimes for online poker, online casino, and virtual slot machines will be added to the already existing sectors of lotteries, horse racing, and sports betting. Advertising and sponsoring for games of chance will be permissible, but only for licensed offers. Let's look into some details. The future IST defines the goal of advertising regulation. Advertising must not be contrary to the objectives of the interstate treaty. This means to combat gaming addiction, to channelize player traffic to license offers, to protect minors and players, to combat fraud, and to protect sports integrity. Advertising for games of chance will be determined by specific license conditions. Also, advertising guidelines may be developed and published Prior to adopting those advertising guidelines, the industry shall be given the opportunity to comment. The explanatory notes, notes define the goal of advertising restrictions to be intended to contribute to steering the already existing demand for games of chance into licensed markets, while at the same time creating as little demand for games of chance as possible. In addition, existing demands for games of chance is to be directed towards less dangerous games of chance through advertising. It goes without saying that we can expect major restrictions. I will, go no, I will not go too much into the details since my fellow panelists will be happy to provide their view and expertise on this. But here are a few examples of general restrictions which apply to any advertising of licensed online sports betting, virtual slots, online poker, and online casino operations. First of all, of course, the general advertising standards apply, which means no misleading, no excessive advertising, and no targeting of minors or other vulnerable people. Advertising in sports stadiums is only permitted in the form of umbrella brand advertising on jerseys and boards, as well as sim similar advertising media. Advertising via telecommunication systems is prohibited. Nevertheless, calls initiated by the players are allowed, and such calls may include advertising content. License operators may use affiliates, not remaining responsible for the advertising, but no remuneration dependent on turnover, deposits or stakes may be agreed or paid for advertising games of chance. Fixed remuneration per click or per customer who registers remains possible, permissible. In addition, we find some product specific advertising Restrictions, here are just a few examples for sports betting, no advertising for sports betting with active athletes and officials. This concerns the popular advertising with brand ambassadors. No advertising for sports betting on television immediately before or during the live transmission of the sport event being advertised. Umbrella brand advertising as well as sports betting advertising in relation to other sporting events remain unaffected by this map. For slots, online poker and online casino, there's a watershed. It means no advertising between 6 a.m. and 9 p.m. Uh, per day on TV, radio, or internet, unless this advertising can be qualified as simple umbrella brand advertising. It does not include any visuals or indications towards the slots, online poker, or online casino. This watershed does not apply to sports betting. There's way, way more to say. And way more, but this shall serve as an introduction. You can't say more in five minutes, except thanks for your attention. Back to Willem. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jörg. That is really interesting. I think it's a helpful perspective for the rest of the discussion uh, today. So let's move on to the next uh, slide, please. Yes, great. Um, 
Welcome, Mr. Blauer, Dr. Blauer. Uh, you're dialing in from uh, Munich, I believe. Uh, welcome, and I hope you're doing well. Can you hear me, Dr. Blauer? Okay. Yes, I hear you. Great, it's fantastic. Now. Welcome, yeah. and I hope you're very well. Um, so let's move to the next uh, slide for one second, where we have the first question to you. Uh, Dr. Blauer, uh, question breaks into a few parts. What is currently possible with regards to media advertising? One, who can advertise? Under what conditions? And what are the regulatory risks? Uh, the floor is yours, Mr. Blauer. And also we have a slide supporting your answers, I believe. Yes, thank you for sharing my slides. Next slide, and, please. And also thank you for this kind introduction and uh, warm welcome also from my side. The economic importance of gambling advertising in Germany has grown permanently since its launch in the early years of 2000 and is enormous today. In TV advertising alone, gambling companies invested a media gross of approximately 450 million euros last year. And to give you a sharp idea, this is equivalent to 1.5 times the gross spendings for beer advertising on German television. That means gambling advertising is now a very important factor in the German advertising market. This development is essentially based on advertising activities in the following game segments. Okay, then I repeat, the, the gambling advertising is now a very important factor uh, in the German advertising market. And this development based on advertising activities in the following gaming sector. Firstly, the advertising of sports betting. As an, a distinction has to be made here, whether it's a provider who has submitted an application for a German license based on the third amendment of the Interstate Treaty on Gambling, which came into force on the uh, 1st of January this year. For these applicants, the regional council in Germany, das Regierungspräsidium in Darmstadt, as responsible authority, has announced that the activities of the providers will not be subject to measures of the gambling authorities. In particular, they don't have to expect cease and desist orders. As far as providers with an EU license are concerned, that means you have not submitted an application, the result should not be different. Following the decision of the Darmstadt Administrative Court on the 1st of April this year, to suspect the license procedure. In my opinion, the legal situation before the third amendment to the Interstate Treaty on Gambling came into force again. Based on the case law of the European Court of Justice, in particular on the so-called Sebat Imche decision, providers with an EU license can currently also and again advertise without expecting obstacles. As far as providers have a multi-channel digital product in which, in addition to sports betting, online casino poker and similar games are also offered, in my opinion, this is also legally possible at the moment, as long as the procedure for granting gaming licenses is, susp um, is suspended and pending. Yeah. The second field of advertising in the there is the advertising for online casino and poker based and uh, poker based on uh, gaming license from the federal state of Schleswig-Holstein. These licenses were renewed in June 2019 based on the new law. They expressly allow nationwide advertising of licensed uh, gambling offers, especially on nationwide TV, unless this is out of proportion to advertise in Schleswig-Holstein. The background of the nationwide advertising approved by the authority is the fact that Schleswig-Holstein does not have regional media with a noticeable reach among users, so that only the nationwide TV channels um, and the advertising in these channels seen in Schleswig-Holstein can reach a larger number of people and can direct them to the licensed offers. Certainly, 
the advertising for social online casino and poker, in particular free-to-play casino and poker, which can be seen to a lesser extent on the market, should, in my opinion, be possible in so far as the offers have clear and plausible business models with a single focus on the German market, in particular when there are international casinos and poker offers under a similar brand. Um, fourthly, and only to complete the picture, of course, there is also advertising for the state lotteries to a significant extent. Back right, to the right. And thank you for your very extensive uh, answer, Dr. Blau. So I will catch the time. Yes, and your, your sound also is uh, better now. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the next uh, slide, please, with the next question for Dr. Blau. Mr. Blau, what will change when the fourth state gambling treaty comes into force next year on the 1st of July 2021? And what will be the impact of the restrictions on multi-product offerings on advertising regulations? Uh, Dr. Blauer, please. Thank you. Um, will this increasing development of gambling advertising continue under the conditions of the new state in the Treaty on Gambling 2021? That's the question. First of all, this required that a stable, competitive, competitive and economically attractive provider market can emerge or can be maintained under the new regulatory conditions. In the view of a large number of restrictions for the provider, and uh, I think you have mentioned that in advance, um, for example, serious uh, product restrictions, especially concerning live betting and the so-called virtual slot machines, or waiting phases of five minutes when users are changing the provider on the internet, and uh, that seems questionable. But should such a, such a market arise, in particular, the following differences from the current situation must be taken into account with regard to the advertising of gambling offers from July 1st, 2021. First, new is the daily between 6 a.m. and 9 p.m. There is no advertising allowed on TV, on radio and internet for the so-called virtual slot machines, for online poker and online casino. The political opponents of liberal regulation on the, uh, of the gaming market, who originally even wanted to ban advertising until 11 p.m., have won in this point. Second, in my opinion, the rule that advertising should not be excessive is very remarkable. From the historical art origin of this rule, it can be concluded that in particular, the content of the advertising is to be restricted, above all to the extent that advertising must not encourage users to play. So that means advertising is not allowed to advertise. In my opinion, this could make call to action advertising measures, including discounts, bonuses, etc., much more difficult than today. Third, with regard of the other important performance oriented measures, the ban on affiliate advertising should also be emphasized. The same applies to quota related deep integrations in similar performance tools for sports betting in the context of live tickers and live scores. Fourth and finally, from my side, the note that the new regulation expressly provides that further advertising restrictions, in particular on TV and the internet, can be implemented within the scope of the gaming license to be granted. Here, it can be expected that the restrictions previously covered by advertising guidelines will be included in this license. This means, and I will emphasize that, that in the event of violations, the license is always in danger. Thank you for your attention and uh, back to you, Willem. Thank you, Dr. Blau. These were very simple questions um, and the answers were extremely insightful. Thank you very much. Um, we move to the next uh, speaker we have here, another person from uh, Munich here. Our second panelist, Frank, 
I'm very pleased you're here. Can you hear me? Can you see us? Yes, yes, yes. Can you hear me? We can hear you loud and clear. Yeah, perfect. Wonderful. How are you, Frank? I'm, I'm very fine. Actually, not in Munich currently, as uh, we have a bank holiday tomorrow, and I am at my parents' house in Lower Saxony. <laughs> very nice. Very yeah. nice. Traveling. <laughs> yes. Now. So great. Um, so let's look, look at the first question, uh, Frank. What does the current advertising landscape for you as, as a, a buy side expert look like? Yes. From an operator's yes. perspective, what channels are particularly effective? Yes. And what are the challenges, uh, Frank? Um, yes. Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction, Willem, and uh, a warm welcome to the audience. Um, yeah, the advertising landscape, I mean, Andreas Blauer touched it uh, already um, um, a bit, but I will uh, give you more details about that. You have on the one side, I would say the multi-product operators that primarily advertise with their uh, sports betting uh, product and, and which are known for their sports betting brand. And these operators are, uh, let's say, in the market for the last 15 years. I have to say it started all with with uh, let's say the local heroes like uh, Bwin, Bed at Home, Intervetten, these guys were, as I said, 15 years in the market or even longer. And um, yeah, I mean, these operators advertise uh, based on their, uh, on, the, on the fact that they have uh, applied for a license in 2012 in, in, in Hesse, that they are currently applying for a license again in Hesse uh, um, uh, in, in, under the new regulation. And of course, uh, because they have a, a European license, a Maltese license. Um, um, on the other side, uh, and, um, um, you have casino operators uh, advertising. And these operators, and, and I mean standalone casino operators. And uh, these operators were not uh, visible, I, I would say, since uh, or until, uh, uh, let's say, 2000. 16 or something. I mean, the, the Schleswig-Holstein license model was initiated 2012, uh, but back then uh, only a few operators activated their license and only a few operators had, let's say, the idea to promote this specific uh, casino label based on this license. That changed. Uh, since, I, uh, since 2016, I would say there are, we see big investment from standalone casino operators, primarily on TV, and they advertise their Schleswig-Holstein label there. Um, and to a lower extent, you also see some uh, operators who promote a free-to-play label, which is also possible, yeah. uh, uh, and, and, and a social casino as well. But that's really the, 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 the casino market is more or less dominated by the Schleswig-Holstein license operators. And um, it is maybe interesting to note that the ad spendings from the casino industry now overtook, at least on TV, overtook uh, the spendings from the um, multi-product or from the sports betting side. Okay. So that is, and we're talking about gross spendings here. So uh, not net spendings, gross spendings. So what everybody can uh, uh, get uh, these figures uh, through Nielsen. So every media agency should have access to the Nielsen figures. Um, and that's a trend in the market. And uh, I think that is uh, quite interesting already pre-regulation, as we know that online casino, or at least a light version of online casino, namely the virtual slots, will be regulated yeah. by uh, July 21. Coming to the effectiveness of the channels, um, well, yeah, that is now dealing with the, let's say, uh, yeah, what brings the success also of, of advertising. As uh, uh, Mr. Hoffman mentioned, uh, it is about channelization. And um, I mean, the most important channel still is uh, TV for, for all of these operators, to be honest. I mean, I see the casino industry only working on the TV side, maybe also on affiliation, but uh, um, 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 these Schleswig-Holstein license operators, I, they are, their marketing mix consists, I would say 90% of TV. Um, whereas on the sports side, you see a more, uh, uh, um, I would say a more fragmented media mix. So there's also TV is the magic potion, we call it uh, in your media mix, because it's the oil in your machine that keeps your acquisition machine running. Yeah. Um, um, next to the TV channels, uh, you have the sponsoring uh, part, of course. That is something for the sports industry. I mean, this is 
specific target group, men over 18 interested in sports. And so um, almost all Bundesliga clubs, and this is the most important betting asset, I would say, uh, uh, have an, have, have a, has a partnership from the betting industry. Good. So sponsoring is another important channel, which is already quite crowded because there are 18 clubs in the Bundesliga. And of course, if you have a deal with them, it is an exclusive deal. Yeah. And Frank, I'm afraid we have to wrap up your first part yes. of the question. Maybe was there one, one last thing you wanted to mention before we move to your second question? Yes. Great. Um, you mean uh, the effectiveness of the channels or, or, or the challenges uh, you have with these channels? The challenges, but uh, briefly so we can move on. Yes, to yes, 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 yes. Just so, so the challenges I, I mentioned already, it is, it is um, how to get a share of voice in those channels. I mean, it gets crowded. This, this market gets more and more mature, even pre-regulation. And um, um, there you have exclusivities around the Bundesliga, not only uh, in sponsoring, but also on TV. Um, some of you might know that Tipico is the uh, official sponsor of the Bundesliga. So that comes along with exclusivities uh, around special ads in the Bundesliga. And uh, you have other big operators uh, with, uh, big, uh, with deep pockets, I would say. So uh, for every new market entrant, it's also always a challenge to get share of voice in these, in these channels. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Frank. Um, fantastic. A really insightful uh, part of the first question. Let's move to the next slide, please. Uh, exactly, and so looking into the future, Frank, your second question, what is going to change from next year, the 1st of July 2021, and what new marketing opportunities does the new state treaty bring, Frank? Yeah, I, I think um, the watershed ban that Jörg Hoffmann mentioned uh, uh, and, Jörg, and, and Dr. Blauer uh, from uh, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. will affect, uh, obviously, the standalone casino operators, where today they are advertising, let's say, 24-7. Uh, um, they cannot advertise during this uh, uh, time period, during the day. Uh, but uh, umbrella marketing, from my understanding, will be possible. So for, the, for these multi-product operators, it they will not be impacted. So that will, will have an effect. Um, um, well, re with regulation, there will be new market entrants, I, I, I assume. So uh, there will be an increased pressure and, uh, from, the, from the demand side. So uh, uh, the, the market will get more crowded. And, you know, uh, especially on the sports side, there are not so many assets that you uh, want to place your product or your brand around in, in, in terms of sports content. So it's the Champions League, it's the Bundesliga, uh, the second division, and uh, it is already crowded. They are pre-regulation. So uh, um, um, that, will, that will increase uh, with, with the new regulation. Um, um, another important change, what will happen with the affiliate model? I mean, the, um, Dr. Blauer mentioned it. Uh, uh, it is from the state treaty not allowed to have this, that uh, that uh, publisher is paid by, let's say, uh, uh, on a performance base by driving in new customers or on the growth in revenue that these customers bring. So let's see how this industry can respond to these uh, challenges. Um, regarding new marketing opportunities, uh, well, there is an important channel in regulated markets, which, which is currently closed in, in Germany, which is uh, Google AdWords, PPC market. Yeah. So that, that will open up. That's a new opportunity, uh, I would say. And um, yeah, I mean, um, um, the, the, the advertising for virtual slots is, will get legalized. Yeah, that's the first time that you, or it's the first time that you have a, let's say a proper license, a federal license that you can advertise virtual slots on TV. Although there's a watershed ban, it's still, I think, uh, a step in the right direction. Although it is still, let's say a light casino version uh, that will be regulated. So in that sense, uh, uh, we all know that live casino and table games is, a, is an important fragment of the, of the market. And uh, if that will not be regulated properly, then the demand will shift elsewhere and uh, that will be the black market. Yeah, okay. Well, thank you for sharing your view of the future with us, um, Frank, I really appreciate it. Undoubtedly, you, you as listeners and dialing in at home, you will have questions of, of yourself. Please do not hesitate to submit your questions through the Slido app. You can submit your questions now, as soon as you're logged in. Uh, and let's move on to our next and last panelist for now. Martin, Martin Heyer from, from Brussels. Martin, how are you today? 
I'm very well. Thank you very much for having me on. I uh, apologize for your view of my uh, closet. Uh, I couldn't upload uh, the virtual background, but I, 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 uh, I, uh, I hope uh, the quality will be good nevertheless. It's uh, very good, uh, Martin. So, Martin, let's look at the German advertising regulatory framework from a wider pan-European perspective. Uh, and we have a first question for you here. The European Gaming and Betting Association, the EGBA, recently issued the first European code for responsible advertising for online gambling. How does this code relate to both the current and newly proposed German advertising regulations? That's our first question to you, Mike. Yeah, thank you, Willem. Well, uh, I think uh, I mean, advertising obviously extremely important part of uh, the business, online gambling business. I think Mr. Hoffman explained very well. Without advertising for online gambling, you have no idea who's regulated and who's not. So advertising is a very important part of our business. It's controversial, but important. And our code is a responsibility initiative of our members to show leadership and commitment and improve advertising standards throughout Europe, including in Germany. So the idea is that we will apply the code everywhere in Europe, including in Germany. It's also open to other operators to sign up to, provided of course they are willing to apply the measures and they're willing to be monitored because that's an integral part of the, of the code. You need to be able to submit yourself to a monitoring process. So we'll be gambling operators that sign up and then via their contract, their affiliates, advertising intermediaries, brand ambassadors, influencers, and bloggers will also be um, held to the, um, yeah. the code. It's designed to complement and not to replace legislation, importantly, and self-regulation. So whatever is in the code, if the law supersedes, if the law is different, it supersedes the code. We've issued a gap analysis of 15 countries between our code and existing regulation, including against Germany. And um, well, Mr. Hoffman already alluded to some of the uh, specifics of it. I won't go into too much detail, but our code is more specific and broader in scope. So we also include, for instance, uh, measures on sponsorship and on social media. Um, important asset of it, uh, aspect of it is content moderation. It's quite specific what gambling advertising should and should not look like, including for bonuses. Large em emphasis on minor protection. That's also in the current German law, but we are more specific and we also have some um, age screening tools for social media and social media, which is not included as such in the current German regulation. New advertising regulation under development. Uh, some of the differences will be smaller, clearly, because I think the scope of it will be more specific and broader as well. But I think the biggest difference is that in our code, we do not have any uh, bans or watersheds as proposed now in the German legislation. The reason is that we don't believe in bans or partial bans or watersheds, because there's no evidence. There have been several studies, but there's no evidence that advertising, volume of advertising has any impact on problem gambling. So there's no link between the amount of advertising on TV and the level of problem gambling. So for us, responsible advertising uh, is about content. You need to make sure that the content is right. We don't entice minors. We don't entice people that are potential problem gamblers, but it's not about volume. So operators should be mindful of the content and legislators as well. It is about content, not volume. Great. Martin, uh, thank you for your insight. Really interesting. And um, moving on to the next question, and we are getting to the end of our webinar. So please keep in the agreed uh, time. Martin, what do you think the industry can do to keep advertising sustainable and to avoid the public backlash, as in, for example, we've seen in Italy or here in uh, Spain? Yeah, it's, I mean, I think key in this question is the sustainability. We need to make sure that we are sustainable over the longer term. And we need to start doing it now as a sector. We need to show leadership that we are regulated, that we are part of society. And we take a responsibility as constructive part of that society. And that's why we have our code. Uh, and it's important that people don't have their, uh, let's say image confirmed that we're only here to make money and not to contribute. Having said that advertising is important as Mr. Hoffman said, I won't go into it, uh, but without advertising, no channeling, and consumer protection will suffer. So what does need to be done, uh, as I said, we think content moderation is really important. Yeah. Um, it will come at some cost. Uh, some things that are allowed now under uh, advertising, uh, you might not want to do, uh, but you might want to re reconsider. 
because we need to keep our long-term objective in mind. And advertising is really important because it makes the sector so visible. And I'm, I was a, a bit, um, Mr. Hesse said uh, how important TV advertising is. And I think TV advertising also causes some of the uproar that we have now because we reach out to such a wide audience whilst the people that play are relatively limited and the potential customers as well, that we almost cause an overexposure and that causes politicians to react to it. So I think look at your media mix. I think that's a very important question as well. Do you really want to spend all your money on TV advertising or do you want to be more specific, more targeted? And uh, final word, I think responsible gaming ad uh, advertising campaigns, really important. Uh, consider it as an investment, not as a cost. If you compare us to uh, beer, Heineken, they are sponsoring Formula One with a don't drink and drive. I think we as an industry could never do that yet. So we have a long way to go. But I think in that area, responsible gaming, responsible gaming messaging, the industry needs to do much more. Great, fantastic, uh, Martin. Thank you for, for all these uh, answers. I think that was very, very, very helpful. I'd like to, pan first of all, thank our panelists for, for sharing their insights. And this is the moment we move to the interactive part of the webinar. First, we'll be having a look at the poll results. Secondly, we go, and time is running out, we go into a couple of the audience questions that uh, have been coming. And please keep those coming in the Slido app. Scan the QR code, follow the link or download the Slido app and uh, use the event tag G-I-G. -G. So let's go to the poll results here, um, Gil. So you've been entering the choices in Slido and we've seen the results here. So quite clearly, 44% votes for yes. While there are some unfortunate restrictions, the whole package strikes as an acceptable balance between the commercial needs and the long-term sustainability of the industry. Then immediately following that for 40%, no, there are insufficient opportunities for licensed operators to distinguish themselves from black market operators. And the other two yes and no votes uh, achieved 5%. So it's sort of um, an interesting black and white situation here. I, I, give, I think that gives uh, food for thought for the coming uh, months mm -hmm. and maybe, maybe another uh, webinar. Um, so moving on to the Q&A part, we have seen some questions coming in from the industry and I'd like to use a few of those, two, three. Uh, I'll point to some of the panelists. Please keep your answers short and concise. Um, first question, has the final explanatory memorandum to the 2021 treaty be published already. Jörg, can you say something about that? Sure. Jörg, can you hear me? Yes, I was on mute. Uh, I'm not aware of a public source where you can get it, but um, of course the, the content is known, uh, at least to, to those who are going to analyze it, but uh, I'm not aware of a downloadable uh, source which I can uh, share with you now, I'm sorry. I thought so too, great. Um, I don't think anybody has real concrete input for this. So let's move to the second questions that came up by some of the people at home here. Any news on the regulation of federal advertising for the Schleswig-Holstein licenses? Also practicing my German here. Um, Jörg, Dr. Blauer, can I point yes. this question to you? I can try this, I can try this. Um, um, on the one hand, as I said, the licenses expressly allow nationwide advertising of gambling um, license. Dr. Blau, I don't, think we can, I don't think we can hear you. Can you? What can I do? Yes, much better. This is perfect. Okay, I have to come oh. very close. Okay, as, as I said, um, on the one hand, um, um, the, the licenses, in SA um, expressly allow the nationwide advertising um, for the licensed gaming offers, especially also in the nationwide uh, TV. Um, on the other hand, um, let's face it, there are some legal disputes, um, um, especially um, around about competition law against uh, state lottery claims and uh, at the moment, the end is open concerning this. That means, in the conclusion, I 
don't see any obstacles to go on with the nationwide advertising, but um, everybody have to pay attention um, concerning right. these legal disputes. Yeah, great. Um, um, thank you, thank you, Dr. Blau. Um, Jörg, maybe a quick, one, one quick answer. Yeah, to because that. there is a uh, transition regulation for Slavic Holstein licenses uh, in the in the new treaty for 2021, and uh, I would say this concerns the licenses until the end of. Uh, 2024, but I don't think that uh, the um, advertising restrictions or the advertising provisions of the Industry Treaty 2021 will not be applicable for Schleswig-Holstein license holders. That means this watershed ban will certainly apply for them as well. And finally, we need to consider advertising for legal games of chance, of course, is permissible. Great. Thank you, Jörg. Um, Q&A, last one, really, we are running slightly over time, so let's do to the um, uh, quick one here that was upvoted a couple of times. Can we expect broadcasters to place a limit on the amount of gambling advertising they show? And what is the current status of broadcasters advertising inventory? I think the second part of the question was already answered before, but the first part, can we expect broadcasters to place a limit? Um, I'm looking at uh, Frank, maybe Dr. Blau. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe me first, and Andreas, you can maybe add to that. Uh, well, that, 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 I, I mean, that is uh, now the question regarding self-regulation a bit, right? If the TV broadcasters come up with a with a, with a limit by themselves, like it happened in the UK, I, I think. Well, maybe it is something that, I mean, if you look at the Bundesliga now and you see seven or eight betting operators around the Bundesliga, I don't know if that is the right way forward to be honest. Although I work in this industry and I live from that, I have to say maybe that, that comes to the point of Martin Ayer, maybe that gives the wrong, also the wrong perception in the market out there. Uh, and um, But maybe now I hand over to Andreas what he has to say from yeah, the right. broadcaster. Can, Thank you. Dr. Blau, please. I can make it sure that I don't expect um, any self-regulation rules especially based on the fact that we have a very, very um, 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 great uh, field of restriction in this new regulation. And uh, our task is to find the right ways to be compliant on the one hand and to, to get our marketing partners the best way to fulfill their um, achievements, especially concerning performance. It means no more regulation is my expectation. Great. Very clear and concise answer. And um, yeah, I'd like to wrap up the Q&A session uh, with that. We are running slightly over time. This was the first installment in the new Gaming in Holland uh, webinar, Gaming in Germany, sorry, webinar series. You offer similar webinar series. I was just going to say that for Gaming in Holland and Gaming in Spain uh, in the near future. This webinar was recorded. A link to the recording will be shared in our next newsletter. If you have not signed up for a free newsletter, please do so at the website gamingingermany.com. So gamingingermany.com. Um, I would like to thank today's speakers, Jörg, Dr. Blau, Frank and Martin for their contributions and insights, as well as Robert, a sponsor Gamansa for making this webcast possible. Finally, I'd like to thank our team, Jeroen, Sarah, Dan, Gil, and for all the work that they've been doing behind the scenes. I hope to see you soon. Unfortunately, this year's Gaming in Germany conference can't take place in spring as scheduled, but we aim to organize a live event after the summer. We have more details soon, and um, I look forward to meeting you in person. Thank you.